Welcome to the image processing demonstration. I would like to show you today how to build a skeleton of uh, your image processing uh, code in SideLab and then later you can develop it. You can see here that uh, upon startup uh, I start the graphic user interface builder and the image processing toolbox. In the applications menu in the module manager uh, you can uh, install them in image processing. You can click on it and install. I left it loaded at startup because it has a lot of useful functions I will use anyway. So the image processing demo I would like to show to you is a simple code. It creates a user interface first as a figure and then uh, makes a user interface control on it, a picture area as axis and then has a function part uh, with, uh, uh, which is a callback function uh, to the user interface control element. So let's check it uh, line by line or part by part. First the figure. The figure is the complete user interface. The initial size is 1000 times 600. It is intentional because I imagine that I would like to process in this demo 800 times 600 picture size and then I uh, have 200 pixel left initially for the user interface controls. Later of course I can resize it but this is the uh, initial size how it starts. The caption of the figure, the caption of the window will be image processing. I don't want to dock it to the user interface, so I turn off this feature. No info bar, no toolbar, no menu bar, but the default access yes. I turn them on or left them on uh, because I want to show the figure on it and the uh, auto resize uh, should work yes as well because uh, the user should be able to resize the figure, the user interface. The handlers will be the session where I save many things. Of course, uh, the user interface control uh, I highlight here is the push button I place somewhere. The tag will be PB open, so I can identify this user interface control later if I would like. The style is the push button, the string, the caption, this uh, text will appear on the surface of the button, it will be open file. The units are normalized. I highly recommend to use normalized uh, coordinates uh, for the user interface controls because later if we resize the window, it will move proportionally. If I use fixed pixels, then when I resize, uh, the button will be always at the uh, fixed position, so uh, it can ruin the user interface. Now the relative positions are given, because uh, I imagine that until 800 pixel will be the uh, image and the picture part, then uh, at uh, 820, uh, 0.82 relative position will start the button. So I have 2% right now approximately uh, on left and also on the right because this is the uh, X horizontal position, vertical position measured from the bottom, the width of the push button and uh, the height. And this is the callback function which will happen, uh, which will start running uh, when I press the button. The picture area is created with new axes, a new figure area, no margins, and the bounds are the pixels, uh, the image size, 80% uh, uh, width and 100% uh, height, so the 800 times 600 uh, picture is imagined. Uh, assumed to be used and auto clear is turned on so when I load a new function a new picture and uh, it is maybe has smaller size uh, pictures will not overlap so always a clear figure will be with only one picture visible how to open one picture? You can see the PB open uh, callback function is here. The file name, pass name and filter index I return the user interface get file function. Uh, I made the uh, JPEG uh, file extensions listed here and uh, the caption in the list will be JPEG pictures so I expect those type of pictures to be opened. And if the filter index is zero, no picture was selected then we quit from this function. 
But if we have a picture, we will read it, of course, with the full file name, with past name and file name together, and show the picture and save into the session uh, because later I would like to process it. So let's see how it works. Now you can see the user interface is here and only the figure and the handle session is calculated, uh, created, nothing else. In pictures, let's see a nice tomato picture in the greenhouse. You can see green around uh, and nice red tomatoes are here. That's it. And the picture is not available here in the variable browser as a general. Uh, global uh, variable, it is used only in the handlers. So I highly recommend to save your data into the session, uh, not to make it uh, messy here in the variable browser. Okay, so now we are able to open a file, a picture, wow, great. But uh, what we can do with it? I would like to show you how to process a color picture, let's say normalize the colors. So the PB open is already here. I will make a normalize function. The tag, of course, should change because it is a different push button. Will be I will call normalize. Yes, uh, the caption should be different. I don't want to confuse the users <laughs> to guess what will happen if uh, the same uh, string they uh, push. It will be nor. Lies. Okay, and the position should be changed. The X position, the width and the height of the button should be the same. Only the Y position should change because the uh, height of the button is 0 0.06 uh, compared to 0 0.9 position. If I minus 0 0.84, so uh, plus the 2% uh, difference, 0 0.82 will be the position here. And the new callback function pb normalize will be here. Of course, I need this callback function here. So in the function area, I will create pb normalize. Uh, one parameter is the handles. And now it uh, at the beginning, if we we'll do not, it will do nothing. Uh, return uh, just to be able to test it, but later I would like uh, to make color normalization. So I do it step by step. First, I created the user interface control, and here is the uh, push button handle, a callback function. So I save it, create. Yes, I have a nice normalized button, I can use it. So now I have to fill it with content, what it will do when I press the button. Of course, uh, I assume that uh, I have a picture. It is saved in the session. Uh, to keep the session picture uh, in its original state, I make a temporary variable, which will be uh, the picture. So I save the picture data into this temporary uh, variable and I will work on it, not the original picture, I keep it safe. What to do? First, I would like to know whether it is a real color picture. So the height, width and the layers are given uh, with the size function. So this temporary variable will be checked for correct uh, size. The, as the matrix size, of course, the height width will be returned, but uh, the layers is a question if we have only a uh, single matrix, uh, you know, one channel in the picture, let's say a binary picture, or grayscale picture, maybe we have only one single layer, it will be a problem, there are no colors. So the layers initially will set to zero. And later I can check after the size command whether we really have a color picture. I'm lazy, I copy the error message from top. So if my layers are still zero, then it means I don't have a color picture. So non-color image matrix, 
it will be a problem. So I drop an error message and I stop doing anything. Okay, but after that, what will happen if we have a nice color picture and we would like to process it? First, I will uh, make uh, the different color layers for red, green and blue pixels. The red pixels will be uh, transformed to double from the original picture. I will use all pixels from channel number one. Okay, I transform it to double because uh, during the calculation it can happen that I am uh, going beyond uh, the range of the byte. Uh, the byte are integer numbers from 0 to 255. Maybe my calculation can result different numbers and at the final step I will uh, transform it back to byte and uh, to pixel data. But for the calculation it's better to have it this way. So. I have three layers, red, green and blue uh, channels I have in the picture. The red is the first, the green is the second and blue is the third. The normalization will calculate uh, new colors for the picture. With uh, a nice equation we will divide the red with the summary of all, the green with the summary of all, the blue with the summary of all. So the summary of the pixels I will calculate as the red plus green plus blue. And I will make uh, this uh, division. This way if I summarize the red, green, blue uh, intensities the result will be always the same the value of 1. Of course in the uh, color pic uh, picture it will be uh, summarized to 255 but uh, here um, it will result the same intensity of all pixels so only the color will be the difference. We can highlight very beautifully what color differences we can observe. So. First, uh, to avoid uh, division with zero, if we have uh, zero elements, I replace them with value of one. So we don't want to divide with zero, it is not really possible. And directly we can already calculate uh, the first channel as unsigned integer with eight bit. So byte we will calculate what it will be 255 times red pixels I divide all pixels in the layer with the summary so this is what I will copy and once more because I have three layers the green layer blue, blue layer and of course the green is the second, blue is the third and now I have a new picture and I can show it with the image show function. The new picture I can see what I have created. Okay, we can test it now, save and execute. In the background I can see no error message, just a warning that I modified the function which is true, it's okay. So I open first the same tomato picture again and then normalize it. And now you can see that this is called a linear normalization. The summary of the intensities will be always the same. So I have the same intensity in each pixel and you can see that the red tomatoes are nice red, the background is green, also the green tomato has greenish color and where you have notice maybe white or gray or dark background, uh, black for example, they appear as gray areas here. Also the surface reflection, the white reflection on the tomato surface is gray now. So if we want to uh, segment for example the red surface of the tomato, we can already do it uh, without this disturbing reflection. So now you have a, a nice skeleton, uh, you can improve your image processing user interface and application in Scilab. You have seen that we created a, a figure with user interface controls and it is ready for processing and uh, since we use normalized position we can 
we can resize uh, our application window and everything will resize proportionally. So thank you for your attention. Have fun with image processing.